Chicken sauteed with a pan sauce. One of my favorite meals. Let me walk you through how I make it. First off, slightly new editing, video, filming, everything here. So let me know what you guys think. Uh, I'm gonna make some asparagus here with this chicken dish. I think asparagus goes really well with chicken, especially with a pan sauce. I just like to cut off the bottom inch or two. Those pieces are always very chewy, aren't fun to eat. So I just get rid of those. We're gonna use a shallot in the pan sauce. So I'm just gonna cut off the top of it and then peel it. I like to make a cut to help peel it just so you can get under that first layer of skin. And then we're gonna cut this up any way you like to dice. This is just the particular way I like to do it. And I'm not great at it yet, but it, it's starting to get better. So dice up your shallot. You can use as much as you'd like in this recipe. I think a good amount of shallot in the pan sauce is really nice, but the one thing I will do is when you're done dicing it, go through and make it finer because you don't want any huge pieces in the end product of your sauce. Just go through and just make it a really nice fine dice after. Take that, throw that into any jar. I love these little glass jars. You guys know that and just put that to the side. That way when we make the sauce, we already have it ready to go. Here's the chicken we're gonna use. Uh, I got thin chicken breasts just cause they're a little easier to cook quickly with a, a dish, but you can use any chicken you want. Pat those dry. The moisture is what kills a good sear. So on any meat, you wanna go through and pre-dry them. After drying both sides here, we're going to salt and pepper. I'm gonna let that sit out for a couple of minutes just so it releases a little extra moisture. But here, just let it sit. And this has been about five, 10 minutes, a little extra moisture has come out. So we're gonna pat that dry. We're gonna flip these over. We're gonna pat that dry. And then we're gonna just salt and pepper and then we're good to go. I'm gonna use a stainless steel pan here. So get that guy on to the fire. Throw in a little bit of olive oil. You can use a uh, non-flavored oil also, anything you'd like to saute with. I like to use stainless steel though, because you get the nice little brown bits on the bottom, which is great for your pan sauce. Once that oil is nice and shimmery like that, lay in your chicken breasts. Don't screw up like I do though and not save enough room for your third one. So I'm gonna have to go through and move it, but it, it's just a, a hazard of pan size. Also, you can remove those white kind of vein looking things on the chicken. They're just kind of sinewy texture. You don't really need them, but on a chicken this thin, they're not really gonna affect the quality of eating. On a thicker breast, you do wanna try to get those out with a fork. Getting a little bit of color here, which is great. Another 10, 15 seconds. On the side, I'm gonna melt down some butter into some olive oil for the asparagus. Just lay those in on a nice medium high heat and let those cook down. They'll start to lay flat after a while also and just get a nice you know, sear on one side. Very easy to cook asparagus on the side. Flip over your chicken. That's looking great. Do another 15, 20 seconds. These are very easy to cook. And then I'm gonna throw them into an oven that I preheat to 225 just to keep these warm while I continue doing everything else. So once I pop those in, I'm gonna turn the heat off and just let them stay warm so they don't overcook. There's the brown bits left. So I'm gonna throw a little extra olive oil on there to start to cook the shallots. You just wanna to start to cook these down a bit, let them be a little bit translucent. You're not really going for brown or fully cooked. You just wanna let them sit in hot oil for about a minute or two. Right there is exactly what you're looking for. They're not brown, they're getting translucent they're good to go. At that stage, I'm gonna add in one tablespoon of butter. First little check here on the asparagus. But there we go, one tablespoon of butter. I'm also going to add in a small spoonful of flour. If you have a chicken stock that is more gelatinous, you won't need the flour, but I know mine is just store-bought, so it's not gonna have all that collagen in it. And the flour will help your sauce come together. Cook that for about a minute to get the flour out of it. You don't want raw flour taste. And I'm gonna add in two cups of that chicken stock. After I add that in, I'm also gonna add in a quarter of a cup of white wine. You don't need that step, I just like the flavor. Then go in and scrape up all those nice little brown bits on the bottom of your pan and turn this up to high heat and really start to reduce this. At this point, I'm also gonna pull out the chicken. It's not done being warmed yet, but there's always some nice juice left on that tin foil. So I'm gonna pour that juice of the chicken, yep, that stuff right there, into the pan sauce. It just really helps enrich that chicken flavor. 
Look at how beautiful those uh, asparagus are. Have they're just sitting on the side. I could turn the heat down now. Those are nice and cooked exactly where I want them. The sauce is also looking great. It's bubbling nice. The smell is getting nice and aromatic. Keep letting it cook down. At this point, it's started to really thicken beautifully. So I'm going to mount it with some butter. That's what it's called when you add cold butter. And we're going to turn this into a sauce. It was already looking thick enough as you moved it in the pan. It wasn't immediately filling in. I don't like this sauce too thick, so that's right where I want it. You could further reduce it if you want, but really start to mount that butter in. Look at how beautiful that looks. I'm gonna add in one more tablespoon of butter and we'll be good to go. Mix that in. We're gonna salt it though. Definitely taste it. The stock and the shallot and everything adds a little bit of saltiness, a little pepper too, so you don't want to over salt. So before you go crazy on the salting, taste it. That is the consistency you want right there. That is absolutely beautiful. And at that stage, I'm just gonna test it out. It's exactly what I'm looking for. It coats the spoon, you wipe it there, see it doesn't run off. That's the texture I'm really looking for. And we're good to go now. Look at how beautiful that is. Just let it bubble, let it do its thing. It's continuing to thicken. Let's add one more teaspoon of butter though. <laughs> Can never go wrong with too much butter. At that stage, I want to cut up my chicken. Just, I like to slice it for presentation. It looks a little nicer, it's easier to eat. You can give people less utensils. I just slice these up, I'm gonna do one and a half Per portion you can't really see it there but there's still good amounts of juice in such a thin piece of chicken exactly what I'm looking for once you slice these all up you can really plate nicely I do a terrible job plating here so apologies in advance sauces on plates are just really hard to make look nice for me but I'm gonna do as I said one and a half of the portion per person one and a half chicken breast get that on your plate Go ahead and grab your asparagus at this point, bring it over and just divvy it up. There's a little bit of, not necessarily sauce, but there's good buttery olive oil in there. So let that stay with your asparagus. I will put some sauce on it as well, but that does add flavor. And then just bring over that sauce. See, it's not super thick, but it's also not like water and it's just running all over the place. It's coating the chicken. It looks beautiful. A little on the asparagus just to give it some extra flavor. And that's your dish. See, it doesn't look great plating wise. I try to fix it. Still looks bad, but it's delicious, trust me.